this is going to be a look at the TLC, the Mattel Teaching and Learn Computer. And this is from Mattel and this is from 1981. So this video is going to be a demonstration. It's going to be a look inside and it's also going to be a repair because when I first got this, it was not working. You can look down in the description and I'll give you times to jump to if you want to skip some of these sections. The general premise of these is that uh, they would come in uh, volumes, learning volumes. And so this one is reading readiness. Gives you a little bit of information about how to use it. It's really meant for young, younger children. Let's talk about ages three and four. Some of the other ones are for older kids. Fascinating Facts, ages seven and eight. Sesame Street, Alphabet, three to six. And then Stories and Rhymes, which is ages three to four. Again, inside would you'd always have three, one, two, three um, envelopes. And in each envelope was a, again, kind of a disc, but it's really a record as I'm gonna show you. Disc itself is double-sided just as the overlays are double-sided. So alphabet recognition and alphabet quiz, recognition and quiz. They were intended to be used by the kids uh, independently. They're only battery powered. So it takes two D batteries and one nine volt battery. So I flipped it over, battery box, pry it up. Screwdriver works easy, flat out screwdriver. And you're gonna see here that again, there's a spot for the nine volt and for two D batteries. Batteries are installed. So one thing that might throw you is there's no on button. The only thing that there is is this, which is a, a ejects the disc. So there's no other on or off button. Uh, what you do is you take the overlay, you're gonna slide it onto here. And then basically you put the disc in and if it's working right, which it is right now, because I've repaired it, um, it's gonna start on the side is where the record goes. Slide it in. Press the green start button. And you should always get that message. If you don't, there's something wrong. If it says something else, that's there's an indication that something's wrong. And again, I do a repair when the timing is off. The Alphabet Circus is coming to visit you. Press the letter and meet the circus star. So it's giving you the directions. You notice the pauses in there. If you watch later, when I take a look inside, you're going to see that those pauses are because it's changing to a different part of the record. So there's definitely pauses once in a while. So let's do D. E stands for Dolly, the dancing dog. <laughs> and you just keep doing that, right? The tiger is telling you he stands for T. So when you're done, you're going to eject it. To eject it, you press this, and the disc comes out. And this should go back. Sometimes it doesn't, so I just nudge it back. So let me just quick show you the other side. Slide the overlay out. So theoretically, after you have the alphabet down, you do the alphabet quiz. And you expect to hear the start prompt. Press the green start button. You gotta wait till it starts ta stops talking. Let's learn our ABCs. I'll say the letters, then you push them on the board. Up, under, uncle, find you. That's right. You're doing great. One of the failures of this, and you'll see in some of the other quiz games where they're talking to you about planets, is they don't give you the correct answer. Um, I just don't think it's within the capacity of the records and things to be able to do that. Wagon, wedding, wink, find W. I'm going to have to get it wrong. Listen and try it again. You can do it. I got it wrong once. Listen and try it again. You can do it. It has no way to give you the wrong answer, so I'm going to get it wrong one more time. I do know what W is. Just for That's that hard. Let's try a different one. So I'm just going to show quick excerpts. I'm not going to show all of these. This is learning about pronouns. And I think this is where the Beatles uh, got their inspiration. I mean mine. I, here I am. I am holding a hat. This is a quick look at the Sesame Street alphabet volume. And they have all the uh, characters on the overlays that you would expect. Again, they are double-sided. It looks like there's some kind of uh, Oscar the Grouch alphabet game on the end. So let's try one of these out. Let's have fun with the alphabet. 
Press the green start button. Your friends from Sesame Street want to tell you about letters. Press the buttons and hear what they have to say. Hello, I'm Big Bird. Boy, do I like the letter B. Buddy starts with B. Snuffleupagus is my best buddy. So this one looks interesting. Fascinating facts. It is for a little bit older kids, seven and eight. Dinosaur quiz, that should be a favorite of some kids. Uh, famous woman quiz, that's progressive. It's pretty woke for 1980, whatever. True or false quiz. Animal facts. Fascinating world records. Fastest human. Camping out. Mustache, wow. And uh, animal quiz. I'll ask you some questions about these famous women. Listen, then press the right button. Here's your first question. She taught the explorers how to survive in the wilderness. Good for you. You know a lot about famous women. The way you turn it off is just to eject it. There's no other way to turn it off. And if you leave it on for, I don't know, two or three minutes, it'll start beeping at you annoyingly to remind you to reject it. So if you hear that beep, that means you've left the disc in too long. It's telling you to take it out. Because again, remember, there's no... Turn off battery, so that's all that that beepy means. Take out the disc. To hear some incredible and astonishing world records, press each button and listen. Do it now. The longest mustache was 102 inches long. Game. The longest Monopoly game took over 1,000 hours. <laughs> A girl once yawned for five weeks. <gasps> How much do you know about dinosaurs? Listen. Then press the button by the right one. Here's your first clue. It would be the ancestor of today's rhinoceros. Can you find it? Absolutely correct. And you see when they give you the, you know, saying you're right or wrong, it's generic because, again, there's just so much that they could put on the records. Quick look at the introductory volume where you got music, nutrition, mix and match story fun, what's the difference, find the lost dog, and solar system quiz. These are musical instruments. To hear how they sound, press any button and strike up the band. Guitar. What happens when super meals meet junk food king and dessert queen? For a great meal at noon, it's lunch woman to the rescue. I'm the dessert queen. I rule with a sweet tooth. I'm the junk food king. I live between meals. Start your day with a super meal like me, Breakfast Man. How much do you know about our solar system? Here we go. When the moon passes in front of it, it's called an eclipse. You're right. So an interesting system for kids, again, younger kids. Some limitations, right? If you get the wrong answer, I can't tell you. A decent variety of games, relatively simple, and some limitations. Uh, due to the records. Uh, take a look inside and see how this thing works. So here it is disassembled. This is that wire membrane. And here's what you got. Battery case, a motor. Uh, this stuff, you know, again, some electronics. And this seems to be the brains of it. There's some kind of chip here. Um, I won't be able to tell you anything about that. This controls the speed, so if you got it going too fast, like in a squeaky, or if it's too slow, you can control the speed of the record that way. Basically what's going to happen is when you put the disc in, this is the record player. With it taken apart, I can still put it in and it will make the initial sound. I won't be able to input anything, so I won't be able to hit the start button, but you'll get some sense of what's happening here as you put it in. Let's make music. Press the green start button. So to get a closer look, you can take this off. Um, this, but be careful, it's not actually screwed in. This, I think, is the thing that beeps. Like, again, when you first press something, it beeps gently. Uh, that beeps. This is the speaker, and you're going to see something interesting. So you just got to kind of rock this back and forth, especially in this corner by the motor, and then gently pull it aside. This is the, the speaker. And no, it's not wired. 
um, it just is amplifying by the shape of it. And it's got, you're gonna see this is a spring because that's gonna be important to keep the stylus down. So this is the stylus and it's got a spring in it. So you wanna be careful that if you remove the stylus, put the spring back in like it's supposed to be. You can barely, nearly, there it is. Just see that. So this is the stylus. And what's weird is there's no wires. So it's not being amplified. So it's only the, the volume's being increased through the speaker thing. So one of the questions is how does this get to the right place at the right time? I, and I don't completely understand. I know that the circuit probably controls it, but it's got to have a uniform starting point. And that seems to be achieved by this hole in each record. Each record has one. And what you'll find is when you put the disc in, at one point, this clamps down on it and um, a little peg kind of goes into that hole. So we'll see how well we can see that. Here comes the record. There, it went down. All right. Generally, this would be going across the stylus, but because this is not being held down, it's not staying on the record because, again, it's got to have that spring from in here. So that's one of the things when you take it apart, you don't get the full effect. And there is that peg in the record. I'm going to eject it. And you should see that pretty good there. The thing about these records is that they all they have numerous starting places, if you will. So generally a record has only one starting place. You go to the first song. But each of these lines takes it to a different groove. When it goes into one of these slots, it's going to play a different song. So if it's the musical instrument, it might be the cello or it might be the violin. So each one of these would have a different slot. And the, the question is how to control this to go to the right slot. Again, some of that I don't understand. I think it's, again, part of what the chip is doing. It's smart. Uh, but basically what happens is this goes over, and you saw that in the video before. It goes over kind of quickly. The spring is holding it down. But once it gets to here, this pops up lifts the spring just enough so that this then comes back because this is on a spring and it wants to come back. So that's the general idea of it. Let's make music. Arm goes Press over. The green start button. There's the spring. The spring pops up ever so slightly there, letting the arm back. So I want to try to remove this so I can more easily test things out. So each one of these tabs I'm pushing in with the screwdriver and, we'll see, and it's part, starting to come out so I want to try to get the rest of the way. So I was able to pop off the screen, I think in one piece. And so here's that membrane. These are the buttons, obviously. So this, this is essentially buttons. So my understanding of this is that, again, this is the card is kind of, the clear card is built, bent in half, but it seems to be glued together. You can barely make out right there a fold. And what happens is when you push, you're gonna basically complete the switch by pushing this top part of the button and making it connect with the bottom part. And that will then basically complete the switch. So again, what you got here is kind of a really, just a smart record player. Um, and whether it's a computer or not, I don't know how that you would debate that, but it, it, it generally speaking, it works and it's kind of neat. So this is pretty simple to get apart. You actually only have to do one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So all six screws are the same, so you don't have to keep track of them. What you're gonna to wanna to do is flip it back over carefully, now that the screws are out, and you're gonna take the top piece off. But you're gonna notice when you start to do that, do it carefully, don't just pull it off. There is this membrane. These are basically wires connecting the top touch screen to the circuit board here. So you're gonna to have to kinda of get your thumbs and finger in there and rock it gently back and forth. You do not want to break that or crack it, so treat it really gently. I'm getting in there as best I can, Pulled it up a little on this side, pulled it up a little on this side, and kind of worked it back and forth. So I had basically a couple of different issues. Um, the first one was the fact that this, the lead for the battery case was totally corroded out. So I took this out of this. This was some uh, battery case that had been, I forget, there was an issue with it, so I saved it for parts. So what I ended up doing is um, using a Dremel to cut out a notch in this piece that lets me lay this across it. I then used um, this stuff, DAP Rapid Fuse, as a primer and then the actual glue adhesive. And at the moment this is staying in, I soldered it. The second thing was that when I uh, initially, 
when I first put in a record, it didn't go, period. It didn't go. And the question is the motor. What's going on with the motor? So here's some things that you might be able to do with the motor to kind of uh, problem solve about what's going on. One of the things that can happen is the motor can just freeze, right? This probably hasn't been played with when I first got it in 25, 30, 40 years, right? So the, the motors easily can freeze. So here's a cheat that I do when I want to just kind of see what's going on. I just want to see, does that motor actually move? So I got these neodymium magnets, and I'm going to basically make a battery case for myself. Oops. So this just allows me to keep these together, and then I have some alligator clips. There's my negative. Here's my positive. And... For this, what I'm going to do is put this to the positive side of the motor. And this is going to go to the negative. Now, you obviously can hear this is turning, okay? So if that's turning, that's good. That lets you know that the motor is moving. And you probably would have heard that when you put in the record. When I first did it, though, it was not moving. So I did this, and I got nothing, okay? So if it's not moving, what are you going to do? So what you can do is actually pull this whole piece out without too much trouble. I'm going to turn this so it's towards me a little bit. But you'd think it would be screwed down. You know, the first time I actually took this apart, I unscrewed it, but it's not. This just holds this together. So I can actually lift this up. And I might not be able to do it too well with one hand, but there we go. So I didn't unscrew anything. Okay. And I got the underside here. And again, obviously being careful... But right here is the motor. So here's the shaft of the motor. And you should be able to see that there's a pulley around it. Okay? So if the motor wasn't spinning, I could try to get in there with the needle nose player and spin it a couple times and then try the battery again and see if it will free up. If not, you actually have to remove the motor, which is pretty easy. So there's this kind of cool little rubber clamp down. I already removed two sides, which will let me hopefully pull the motor out. It's in there pretty good. So I used a pair of pliers to kind of wiggle this thing loose. So I hooked up the nine volt battery. Cause again, I just want to see if this thing would spin. And it does. So if as you're monkeying with the motor and you take it out, the pulley comes off. Again, just flip it over here. And all you gotta do is kind of pull it up and over. Couldn't be easier. They made that, this slot in here makes it nice and easy to get the pulley back in place. The third repair was when uh, it wasn't starting at the right place. I would put a record in and it would not start at the welcome, you know, the press the start button, welcome kind of thing. A clarinet. So that's consistently happening. When I put a disc in, it's supposed to give a prompt to press the start button, but it's somehow starting with the clarinet. And what I ended up having to do is adjust this. I don't completely understand what this is, honestly. It has like two, two, I don't know. They're reading something on this, on the bottom of the thing that turns. And, um, and, it's, and I realized after a while that it can be adjusted. All you need to do is get a screwdriver. There's the central piece there, that little like pyramid shape, and there's a bunch of little ratchets. When I first got when I first got it and looked at it, this was in the middle. That's what those red marks are. But I and and so the screw was actually in the middle, and I would guess that's where yours would be. But when again it wasn't starting at the start, I loosened this and I moved it right. It didn't make it any different. I took it all the way left. That was better, but it, when I would play, it would make some mistakes. So then I ended up adjusting it about two or three little notches that way. So this is what you do if you're not getting um, the right, if the record doesn't start on start or if there's other errors. To test it, you can test it in this position. With this on, you can test it. So, but when you think you have it and it seems to be working right, make sure all the wires are kind of away, tucked away up here. Make sure these wires aren't sticking out because it's gonna be a pinch point here. This sh should be firmly down. And then you're gonna have to obviously get this back into its position here. So you got, I'm gonna, it's a two-handed job, and you're gonna just, again, firmly but gingerly, because you don't wanna bend it and crack 
you know, this piece. So firmly but gently insert it into there. And before I screw it back together, I will put it in, make sure it starts on the start button. And then I'll just do kind of, I like this one as a testing thing because I can kind of test the grid. Clarinet. Snare drum. And assuming that's all good, I'm ready to go and I'm gonna just put those screws back in. So I hope the video was helpful. Give you a demonstration of this kind of cool, old school uh, teach and learning computer from Mattel. Showed you how it works a little bit. Gave you some ideas about repair. Uh, any comments, suggestions, or other information you might have that uh, I don't in this video, please feel free to add it. And thanks for watching.